welcome to all in today's first lecture on unit number 5 today's topic is lubrication system in this lecture the learning objectives are what is meant by lubrication and what are the objectives of lubrication systems what are the different engine parts required lubrication what are the different types of lubrication system and properties of lubricants moving towards the first topic what is meant by lubrication basically lubrication is the admittance of oil between the two surfaces having relative motion as we know that in engine there are various parts and when engine is in running condition these all parts have relative motion so objective of lubricant is to provide oil between this relative provide oil between the surfaces having relative motion so that it will reduce the friction between the parts as well as it will reduce the wear of moving parts along with these two objectives one of the important objective is that whatever the heat generated during the friction this heat carry by the lubricant oil and it will cool the surfaces of that moving parts as well one objective one of the main objective is to seal the space adjoining the surfaces whatever the lubricating oil supplied by the lubrication system it form a thin layer between the surfaces so that that layer absorb the shocks between the bearings and other parts and consequently reduce the noise of engine and whatever the dirt or dust particle present in moving parts that oil carry that dirt particles so in this slide we cover what is meant by lubrication and what are the different objectives of lubrication systems now moving towards the next topic what are the different parts of an engine we know that these are the different engine parts on next slide we will see that all parts through the images we can see here this is a image of crankshaft uh, this is connecting rod connecting rod has two ends small end and big end this big end is connect to the crankshaft on a crank crank pin here this big end is connect to the crankshaft through big end bearing crankshaft have main bearings you can see here total five number of bearings 1 2 3 4 and last fifth bearing this image shows the assembly of all the parts when engine is in start condition the piston reciprocate inside the cylinder so we have to supply oil which will serve purpose of a lubricant and it will provide lubrication on outer surface of piston or on a skirt and inner surface of cylinder as well as the small end of connecting rod is connected to the piston through piston pin or wrist pin or gudgeon pin and small end bearing so we have to provide lubrication to small end of a connecting rod as well as to the big end of connecting rod we can see here the cut section of an engine this is a piston pin or gudgeon pin and this is a small end bearing 
this is a big end bearing you can see here a camshaft which is mounted on camshaft bearing these are the cam lobes now this tapered portion of a cam lobe is strike on wall seat so we have to provide lubricating oil on the surfaces it will avoid the wear of the surfaces now in this image you can see on main bearing on main bearings of connect of crankshaft holes are provided these holes are nothing but oil galleries you can see a small a thin metal rod is inserted on one end of a gallery and it is uh, coming out from the opposite side this is a main bearing and this part is big end bearing where connecting rod is connect to the uh, crankshaft so once oil is supply to this hole due to the rotation motion the centrifugal force act on oil and this oil will flow through this oil gallery and it lubricate the big end bearing as well as hole is provided on big end side or we can say oil gallery is provided on connecting rod once oil is entered in a hole which is on the big end side that oil again lubricate the small end bearings you can see this image shows pole operating mechanism in this case this is a rocker arm which is mounted on rocker shaft which is mounted on rocker shaft the this side of rocker arm strike on the wall seat and because of that the wall is open now when engine is in start condition the camshaft takes the power from timing chain arrangement and this cam lobe the this taper portion of cam lobe lift this push rod and because of that the forces act on a wall seat through the rocker arm during this situation this cam bearing experience high load so we have to provide lubricating oil to this cam bearing as well as in between these two surfaces surface of a cam lobe and follower we have to provide lubricating oil you can see here power from crankshaft is given to the camshaft through timing and sprocket arrangement timing chain and sprocket arrangement so again we have to provide lubricating oil on timing chain and camshaft and crankshaft sprockets as well as you can see here tappet push rod so we have to provide lubricating oil on these surfaces this is a different arrangement you can see here power from crankshaft to camshaft is driven by sorry transfer by timing chain and sprocket arrangement here both gears are directly mesh again we have 
again in this situation we have to provide lubricating oil to avoid the friction this is a expert view of engine where all the parts rot all the rotating parts are assembled together and you can see this is a crankshaft connecting rod piston then these are the push rods camshaft and rocker arm so we have to provide lubricating oil to all these parts okay so in la in previous slides we cover all these parts next topic is different types of lubrication systems lubrication systems subdivided into three types first one is mist lubrication system second wet sump lubrication system and third one is dry sump lubrication system the second type wet sump lubrication system again subclassified into three types splash system semi pressure system and full pressure system let us see mist lubrication system first part mist lubrication system this type of system is used in two stroke cycle engine you can see image this image uh, we can see the image of two stroke engine in this case two or three percent of lubricating oil is added into the fuel tank the oil and fuel mixture is induced through the carburetor when engine is running condition as we know that when gasoline or petrol enters into the carburetor it vaporizes because the flash point of petrol is lower than the ambient temperature but in case of oil the flash point temperature of oil is greater than ambient temperature that's why the oil remains in liquid condition that's why the charge which is coming out from the carburetor charge means mixture of air and fuel which is coming out from the carburetor is in gases phase and the oil is in liquid phase so oil coming out from the carburetor is in mist form and this charge along this liquid oil along with the charge via crankcase goes into the cylinder when this oil enters into the crankcase part of oil impinges on the crankcase and due to which it lubricate main bearing and big end bearing of a connecting rod during the charging condition this oil along with fresh charge enters into the combustion chamber and thus it lubricates piston skirt skirt and inner surface of cylinder and piston rings so in this way the lubricating oil lubricates main bearing big end bearing and piston and cylinder surfaces so this is a simple this system is very simple if we consider the advantages it is a very simple system as well as the cost is low because no oil pump or filter is required in this case this system has some limitations or 
disadvantages first limitation is lubricating oil will burn as you know that this lubricating oil enter into the combustion chamber due to the high temperature part of oil may get burn and it cause heavy exhaust emissions and deposit on the piston crown ring grooves and exhaust port thus this hamper the performance of the engine the second disadvantage is during the combustion some acidic vapors are formed in combustion chamber and as this lubricating oil comes in contact with this acidic vapors it rapidly loses loses its anti corrosion properties so resulting in corrosion damage of bearings the next disadvantage is for proper lubric uh, for proper lubrication the oil must thoroughly mixed with fuel so that there will be effective lubrication but oil has poor mixing characteristics so to improve the mixing characteristics we have to supply we have to add few additives so it will increase the cost of the system and last disadvantage is the oil is diluted during the working one of the major problem of two stroke engine is that the temperature of exhaust gas is higher and scavenging efficiency is less due to which the exhaust gas or exhaust gases are present in a combustion chamber and these exhaust gases dilute the oil which is coming into the combustion chamber in the next cycle of operation so these are the limitations or disadvantages of the mist lubrication system next point or next type of lubrication system is wet sump system this is a schematic diagram of wet sump lubrication system we can see here this is a oil pan in which oil is stored we can call it as a wet sump this is a oil strainer which remove dirt and dust from the oil this is oil pump and pressure regulating valve as engine is start is in start condition the oil pump takes the power from engine and sucks the oil from wet sump to the oil strainer this oil is then supplied to the different parts of engine through secondary filter so in this way the lubrication lubrication system works we can see in this 3d image this is a oil strainer this is oil pan or oil sump this is oil pump and secondary oil filter once this oil pump is in running condition running condition this takes the oil from oil strainer and supply it to the secondary oil filter this is oil gallery which supply oil to different rotating parts okay <coughs> now in wet sump lubrication system it is subdivided into three types let us see one by one first system is splash system in splash system we can see the schematic diagram this 
is oil pan oil strainer and oil pump along with oil troughs are provided the main function of oil pump is to provide oil to the oil troughs and maintain a constant level of oil into the oil troughs in this system once oil pump is start it takes the oil from oil strainer and supply to the oil troughs this is a connecting rod as we can see on a lower portion of a big end bearing a cap is provided in a cap there is a scoop when during the suction stroke or suction stroke and power stroke when piston moves downward direction this scoop dip down into the oil which is in a oil troughs due to which oil is entered into the hole in a scoop as we know that the oil galleries are provided on a crankshaft through this oil galleries the oil lubricate the main bearing of a crankshaft as well as oil galleries are provided on connecting rod so this oil take care of lubrication of small end bearing gusset pin or piston pin as when the connecting rod move downward direction this scoop strike over the oil some sort of oil splash out in upward direction this few droplets of oil stick on the inner surface of cylinder so when piston move downward direction or piston reciprocate inside the cylinder these oil droplets form thin layer between the between these two moving uh, surfaces in this way the splashing of oil provide lubrication to the piston skirt and inner surface of cylinder as well as some some of the oil splash oil stick over the cam shaft or cam lobes and main bearings oil pressure gauge is provided which monitor the desired pressure of oil pump this type of system is used for small four stroke stationary engines only this splash system is suitable for low and medium speed engines which have moderate bearing load pressure this system is not useful in high performance engines which normally operates at high bearing pressure and rubbing speeds moving towards the second type of wet sump lubrication system which is nothing but semi pressure lubrication system this method is combination of splash and pressure system it incorporates the advantages of both systems in this case you can see the oil troughs are also provided as in previous case in splash system but but a difference is that along with oil troughs oil galleries are also provided on discharge side of oil pump in previous case the function of oil pump is just to provide oil to the oil troughs and maintain the level of oil into the oil troughs in semi pressure system the oil pump serves two functions first one to provide oil to the oil troughs and maintain the level of oil 
in the troughs as well as to provide oil to the oil galleries and these oil galleries provide oil to the different parts of a engine you can see here the oil gallery provide oil to the main bearing and oil gallery is provided into the crank case sorry into the crank shaft once the oil is reach to the main bearing then due to the rotation the oil flow through this hollow portion and it lubric it will lubricate the big end bearing once it will lubricate the big end bearing this oil also passes through the oil gallery in connecting rod and it will lubricate the small end bearing a special a separate oil gallery is given to the camshaft so it will take care of lubrication of camshaft bearing as well as cam loops this system is less costly to install as compared to the uh, full pressure system and advantage of the system is that it enables higher bearing loads and engine speeds as if we compare with the splash system now moving towards the third type of wet sump lubrication system which is full pressure system okay one point is remain in this case the oil pressure is about 1 bar in full pressure system we can observe that from semi pressure system no use of oil troughs so here the only function of oil pump is to provide pressurized oil to the different oil galleries through the oil filter you can see here this is oil pan once the oil pump is start it takes the oil from the oil pan through the strainer so dirt or dust particles this oil this strainer remove that dirt and dust particles and this oil filter remove fine particles then this oil provide to the different galleries in this case oil delivered by the pressure pump at a pressure ranging from 1.5 to 4 bar this type of system is very favorable for most of the engine manufacturers as it allows higher bearing pressure and rubbing speeds now moving towards okay we can see this image of full pressure lubrication system here we can see this is a oil strainer or receiver oil pump the pressurized oil is supplied to the secondary oil filter then from secondary oil filter this is a main oil gallery and these are the sub oil galleries so through this oil galleries oil is supplied to the main bearing of crankshaft as well as oil galleries are provided to lubricate the camshaft and rocker arm or wall operating mechanisms you can see this another image where you can have a clear idea about the full pressure lubrication system these are the oil galleries which lubricate the crankshaft as well as camshaft and rock rocker arm 
ओके नाउ मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द थर्ड टाइप सॉरी नाउ मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द थर्ड टाइप ड्राई सम लुब्रिकेशन सिस्टम This is a schematic diagram of dry sump lubrication system. In this system, along with the oil pan, a separate storage tank is provided. This storage tank is on outside of engine block. And you can see here there are two oil pumps. This is a scavenging pump or sump pump. The function of this sump pump is to take the oil from the dry sump through the strainer and provide this oil, lubricating oil, to the storage tank. This oil pump takes the oil from supply tank or storage tank through oil cooler, and then this pressurized oil is supplied to the different parts of engine the oil pressure may vary here 3 to 8 bar so if we consider the oil pressure in full pressure lubrication system the oil pressure is in the range from 1.5 bar to 4 bar and in dry sump lubrication system the oil pressure is in range of 3 bar to 8 bar this system this systems are used for high capacity engines only it takes high bearing loads and so lubrication for high speed and high capacity engines you can see here the pressure relief valves are given the function of this pressure relief valves is to maintain or to monitor the discharge pressure of pump if discharge pressure is exceed then these walls will open really and excess oil will return to the tanks now moving towards the properties of lubricants Now we go through the last topic properties of lubricants. The first property of lubricants is viscosity. It is the ability of oil to resist the internal deformation due to the mechanical stresses. And hence it is a measure of the ability of oil film to carry load. A more viscous oil can carry a greater load as viscosity varies with the temperature and hence if a surface to be lubricated is normally at high temperature it should be supplied with the oil of high viscosity. So in case of engine where to use the oil which has high viscosity index now this high viscosity index indicates the relatively smaller change in the viscosity of oil with temperature it means that higher the viscosity of oil greater is the frictional loss as in case of oil the temperature of oil increases the viscosity decreases and the frictional losses are reduced during a certain temperature range so viscosity index higher viscosity index is a important thing in order to improve this viscosity index 
certain compounds which called as velocity viscosity index improvers we need to add now moving towards next property flash point flash point is defined as the lowest temperature at which the lubricating oil will flash with a small flame as it pass across the surface the flash point of oil should be sufficiently high so as to avoid the flashing of oil vapors at the temperature occurring in common use next property is fire point it is the lowest temperature at which oil burns continuously the fire point of oil must be high enough so that oil does not burn in service next is a cloud point when oil is subjected to low temperatures the oil changes from liquid state to the plastic or solid state in some cases oil start solidifying which makes it appear cloudy the temperature at which this takes place is called as cloud point next property is pore point pore point is the lower temperature at which lubricating oil will pour it indicates the ability of oil to move at low temperature this property must be considered because it affects the starting of an engine in cold weather conditions next property is oiliness this is the property which enables the oils enables the oil to spread over and adhere to the surface of bearing it is the most important in boundary lubrication higher the oiliness higher will be the thickness of boundary and it will carry more load next property is corrosiveness or corrosion the lubricant should not be corroded to the work to working parts and it must retain its properties even in the presence of foreign matter and additives next property is physical stability a lubricating oil must be stable physically at lowest as well as at highest temperature at lowest temperature that oil should not be solidify and at highest temperature oil vapors should not form it means that if at lowest temperature no solidification and highest temperature no formation of oil vapors we can say the oil is physically stable in all operating conditions or in all operating temperature conditions next one is chemical stability lubricating oil should also stable chemically there should not be any tendency for oxidation sorry oxide formation means during working condition at higher temperature if temperature of oil get increase it should not be chemically react with the oxygen present in air if it will not react with the oxygen we can say that the oil is chemically stable neutralization number an oil may contain certain impurities that are not removed during the refining process and the neutralization number is a test 
in which a simple processor to determine the acidity or alkalinity of an oil next one is the film strength it is the property of lubricating oil due to which the oil retains a thin film between the two surfaces even at high speed and at high load if the film does not break and two surfaces do not come in direct contact the adhesiveness and the film strength cause the lubricant to enter the metal pores and it will carry high bearing loads so higher will be the film strength higher will be the load carrying capacity at high speed and last one is emulsification a lubricating oil when mixed with water is emulsified and lost its lubricating property the emulsification number is an index of a tendency of an oil to emulsify with water so here we cover up the different properties of lubricants as the oil which being used in lubrication system should have higher viscosity index so that at higher temperature there will be small changes in its viscosity and the viscosity of oil will constant at all operating temperatures the flash point and fire point of oil should be higher enough because during working condition we know due to the friction and the excess heat which is stored into the engine parts the temperature of engine parts or the surfaces is higher enough so that that oil can withstand at at the temperature due to which the flash point and fire point property along with the viscosity plays very important role during the lubrication if the flash point and fire point of lubricating oil is higher then the film strength of the lubricating oil is also high enough sorry the film strength is also higher and it will serves a proper lubrication purpose at high load and at higher speed so we cover the learning objectives of all lear learning objectives in this lecture this video lecture is only for study point of view not for commercial purpose all the material i have taken from the internet and books i have just compiled all the material in a sequence this lecture is strictly from the point of view of syllabus of sppu you can see what are the diagrams or images i have taken i have given a referencing to all diagrams these are the urls and few diagrams i have taken from a book a textbook of internal combustion engine second edition author is rk rajput sir and from which page number i have taken that diagrams also mention i hope you all understand the topics that i have covered in this lecture thank you for your patient listening thank you